Um, I did not record a proper intro because I did not originally intend for this to be a two-part video. So instead, I'm just going to voice over me talking and we can play pretend. I promise you I'm going to get like a real microphone soon uh, and then we won't have these issues anymore. If you remember last time, the dress that I wound up with was very, very, very short, and I can't leave my house looking like that or else my mom will get really mad. So what I did was took some complimentary color green material that I got uh, as just a $1 sheet from Goodwill. Uh, I put the dress down on it and then the pattern pieces down onto it to see how much material to cut in order to extend the skirt length on it. By the way, I'm sorry if I sound sick, it's just because I tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, I should be fine, but you should be thankful because I don't think that I would have found time to edit this video if I wasn't homesick from work right now. I am so thankful to the doctor and the nurses who saw me. They were completely swamped that day and it's 100% because of COVID. Trying to get tested took me three hours waiting. More important than me though, uh, Jeff is doing just fine. He got tested today and he came back negative. Uh, he was sick last week but not nearly as sick as me and the doctor suggested that maybe he had it before I actually did. And while he was sick, we had no reason to suspect that it was COVID because he didn't have a fever or any of the normal symptoms at all. He was just kind of fatigued and not feeling great. Anyway, back to the project at hand. Here you'll see that I am cutting through this cloth like butter because the scissors are actually doing their job and scissoring because I'm not using the old terrible dull pair of scissors, but I'm using the good pair of scissors. That's right, I found them. My sister gave me this pair of scissors. It came in a three pack and I haven't even sharpened them. I don't know if, that, if that's bad or not, if I should sharpen my scissors, but they still work incredibly well. For any of you who have been following along with the scissors drama in my life, uh, knowing that I lost this pair of scissors was absolutely heartbreaking for me, and that's why I'm so excited to have found them. So with Varsity snippers in hand, I went ahead and cut an extension to each portion of the skirt by just extrapolating a length off of it. Oh gosh, look at those scissors go! One of the things that they don't warn you about when you start sewing is if you do any amount of your cutting on the floor, it really works your butt. I warned you in the last video that I gave up using pins at this point because of how short each of the uh, skirt extension portions were, so this was all just kind of done sort of freehand. Sorry if that triggers you, but stick around because I'm going to start using a lot of pins here shortly. A funny thing about this sewing machine is it's actually Jeff's. He got it as a gift probably back in like 2011, and I swear he's never used it once, but I've used it like 400 times. Do you guys want to talk about seam allowances? Because I just eyeballed all of this. Uh, I told you before I'm reckless. It's weird because if I'm making something for somebody else, then I'll be very careful and follow all of the directions. But if I'm making it for myself, then normally only I know that the mistakes are there. So I don't even bother and then I just kind of do whatever I feel like. But as I unfold it, uh, you can see it looks like a skirt portion. So then I pinned all of the skirt that I just sewn together onto the bottom portion of the dress. Um, look guys, pins are back. You don't have to worry about me. I'm using pins again. The eagle-eyed viewer will notice two things. One, I did not bother even getting dressed that day, and two, I'm actually pinning this on the wrong way so that later whenever I go to sew it and then flip it down, the seam is completely exposed on the outside of the dress. I wound up fixing this later by cutting out and sewing together another skirt extension and then sewing it onto the exposed seam so that when it flipped down it covered up my mistake and uh, maybe you guys should be a little worried about me. I realize now that a lot of this video is just me showing you a bunch of mistakes and then not showing you how I fix them and I also think it's funny that my solution to this mistake was to do extra work to cover it up instead of going back and fixing it in the first place. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. I know that Dolly Parton would be proud of me either way. Hey, do you guys remember this video? Uh, I know that you didn't think that I was making the skirt extension out of a completely different color. This is the lining! So I made two dresses, and then I put one dress inside the other, and this is me cutting out the lining for the second dress. If you've never put a lining in anything before, it's just double the work for, like, no reason. I will tell you, though, when I told my mom that I made a dress that I put a lining into, she was really impressed with me. I did like 
the dress once the lining was in because the sheet that I made the lining out of, which also cost a dollar from Goodwill, was way, way, way softer than the materials that I used to make the actual dress, so it made the dress more comfortable whenever I put it on. It also reminded me of wearing a slip under the dress, and I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember this or if your moms made you do this, but when I was growing up, my mom always made me wear slips under my dresses uh, because it was a holdover from fashion from when she was a little girl, and I still remember when Walmart sold slips like off the rack, but apparently Apparently that's just not really a thing anymore. So at this point, uh, Jeff had gone to bed and it was really late at night, so I couldn't use my sewing machine anymore, so I was doing stuff with the collar and the cuffs by hand. So I decided that since this was going to take a really long time, I was going to uh, marathon some Harry Potter movies. The funny thing is, I don't even really like the early Harry Potter movies because they didn't really hit their stride and the actors weren't really old enough to not be just kind of like children on screen. Um, the last three movies are my favorite, but of course, I watched like one and two this night. Um, I don't understand why I think that to marathon something, especially part of a franchise, that you have to start over at the beginning, because it's just not true. Learn from my mistakes, just watch the movies that you like. It's like the Star Wars movies. I always tell people if they haven't seen Star Wars to just watch the original trilogy, but if you're crunched for time and you can only watch one, just watch Empire Strikes Back, okay? Honestly, it's the only really good Star Wars movie. There's my hot take. Something a little bit more wholesome, I guess. Um, if you guys are worried that I'm supporting Joanne by watching the Harry Potter movies, I've actually owned all the DVDs as they came out. My dad bought them, and then he gave them all to me. So uh, I'm really sticking it to Joanne here, guys. If you guys do want to watch Harry Potter, but you kind of hate Harry Potter, though, then I would recommend that you watch the Rift Tracks to it. Uh, hashtag not sponsored, obviously, but I've been watching Rift Tracks forever. Uh, it's done by the guys who originally did Mystery Science Theater 3000, which I watched as a kid, like, every Saturday morning. Um, but it's the only way that I could get Jeff to watch the Harry Potter movies, was to put the Rift Tracks on with it, so that there were people making fun of it while we watched it. Uh, another thing about, uh, Mystery Science Theater, since I'm on this stream of consciousness tangent thought, um, I saw the last episode air when I was, like, nine years old. And I didn't know that it was going to be the last episode, so I just sat down Saturday morning as usual, and then the episode goes by, and then at the very end, it's just, like, very clear that it was the last episode, and the show was over, and then it ended, and I was just, uh, I was, what, what? Excuse me, nobody told me this was happening. I didn't know that shows could just end. I'm nine, okay? What am I going to do every weekend now? So if it looks like I'm not really doing anything, it's because I'm, um, like, basting a seam along the sleeves so that it doesn't like stretch um per the pattern the pattern told me to do this i did it okay um and then molly here is chilling with me but i'm pretty sure at some point i heard a noise like at my back door um yep there it is i heard it i heard a noise i don't know what it is um pretty sure i thought somebody was trying to get into my house and jeff was upstairs asleep and it scared the crap out of me and molly heard it too so i don't uh Apparently I just chose to do nothing about it though, so please don't come into my house because I will do very little to stop you. If it seems like this is a very chatty video and I'm not actually relaying any information, it's because uh, it's not a tutorial. I didn't even know what I was doing. Um, this is me examining the, examining the instructions and then very quietly just disassociating. At this point, I think that I've got it and I make an attempt. No, I just, I go back to the instructions. I have no idea what it's trying to tell me to do. At some point, I just made a decision and decided to do what I thought made sense. Huh. And what I decided to do did not make sense. Uh, so that was my first attempt right there and then I had to tear it all out and then put it in a different way and then try and sew it on that way. Um, if anybody out there has sewing experience and is being really critical of the way that I'm doing things right now, uh, where were you when I needed you to stop me from making mistakes? I did actually though have a very difficult time with these sleeves because I made so many mistakes and you see that uh, blue dealy with the dealy on top that's a seam ripper. I used it so many times on just the sleeves that at one point I just like seam ripped an entire hole in one of the sleeves. Alright, I've got some good news, and I've got some bad news, and I've got some worse news. I got a lot of news, guys. So, I hate hemming dresses because since it's basically a cone, the 
bottom portion is wider than the part you want to hem it up to. So you, you have to create like ease within it. And I don't have a dress form, so I'm just kind of stretching it along. It's not like, I don't know what the opposite of the bias is. Maybe the weft of the cloth to try and make the hem as even as possible. And more bad news, I cut it real jagged and gross. I'm winging it. I've been winging this whole dress. You've seen it this whole time. Uh, the other bad news is that I've been awake since 8 p.m. last night. And it is currently like 2, I think, in the afternoon the next day. Uh, the only good news is that all of this is going to be on the inside and no one will ever have to look at it or know. It'll be our little secret, just you and me. And the other bad news is that I have to do this three times. One for each skirt layer. Good news is that since I bothered to put in a lining and since the lining, like raw edges, are in the inside of the dress, all the raw edges touch all the other raw edges, and I'm not finishing them. I'm just not. I've got more really good news. Ain't nobody going to be looking inside your dress if you decide to make a dress and not finish your, your seams. And, according to the YouTube sewing community, unfinished seams are historically accurate. So... We got that going for us. You know, I, I watch a lot of women on YouTube who make gorgeous, period accurate, Regency and Victorian, Edwardian uh, dresses and garments. And they're gorgeous. And they're always talking about how it's historically accurate, uh, the methods that they use. But nobody ever talks about, like, historically accurate 1960s garments. Like, my mother was born in the 50s. And she made her own clothes from the time that she was a little girl and her mother taught her how to. Until well after she'd already had me. And, uh, one time my mom was telling me about how she had a dance instructor in college. And this instructor comes in class one day, and she turns her back to my mother. And my mother sees that her skirt is too big, and it's being held up with a safety pin. And my mother admired this woman a lot, and she, she said that that was when she realized, like, it really hit her. It's okay to be imperfect. Like, if this woman, who's a great instructor and who's incredibly successful, can have her skirt held up by a safety pin, then it's okay for her to make mistakes too. And I'm so glad that she told me that story because every time that I'm just doing something and obviously messing it up, I'm like, well, if that lady can hold her skirt up with a safety pin, then I can get away with not finishing my seams. Yeah, I think it'd be great to see uh, some historically accurate homemade clothes that were made in like the 70s, where it's just like, oh, now I'm just making an A-line skirt from a McCall sewing pattern because that's, Literally what they did, especially since average mo on the street is not going to be looking at my hemline. And if they are, then hopefully there'll be some sort of kind elderly seamstress who sees my plight and just gives me some words of encouragement. Also, if you don't know what you're doing, use 1,000 pins and uh, you're more likely to at least feel better about how bad you're screwing it up. Only happy accidents. So whenever I started sewing this, uh, I got, I don't know, real in my head about the musical Evita and just started singing along to some of my favorite Evita songs. Because let me tell you, uh, I know that when Phantom of the Opera came out, people were like, oh my gosh, uh, Russell Crowe or whoever, J Jimmy Neutron, uh, the handsome Scotsman. Gerard Butler, that's the guy. They're like, Gerard Butler is surprisingly talented. And then, like, all of us theater kids were like, he doesn't have the range for this. Boo, Gerard Butler. But nobody cared because it was Phantom. 
so I was talking to this guy at work about how he really enjoyed Phantom of the Opera when it came out, and I was like, well, I really enjoyed Evita when it came out, because I'm old, um, and Antonio Banderas is so talented in that role that he's still performing it to this day in, like, shows on Broadway. Uh, he, and then I found out that Antonio Banderas also did the Phantom of the Opera, like, main song between the Phantom and Christine, um, with Sarah Brightman, who was the original Christine on Broadway, and I just immediately had to tell this guy about it, because, you know, things come full circle. But let me tell you, when you have been sewing uh, effectively like six to eight hours a day on this dress and you don't really know what you're doing, a musical about like workers' revolution in 1940s Argentina is exactly what you need. All right, have you guessed what I'm doing yet? That's right, I was hemming like another portion of the skirt. Uh, apparently I also didn't bother getting dressed this day because um, I'm wearing like Jeff's cut-off sweatpants and like an old shirt. Um, but whatever, you can really only... we're looking at the sewing here, people. Listen, though, genuinely, if you've stuck this far into the video with me, thank you so much. Um, did I accomplish a lot? No. Did I try really hard? Also, no. Uh, getting sick sort of does tend to get in the way of things, uh, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, I've got something a little different planned for the next time I upload, and, uh, I don't know, stick around, check it out. Watch, don't watch. Really, I'm just doing this for my own mental health, so if uh, you think, hey, I think that one day it'd be really cool to learn how to video edit and put up a YouTube channel, just do it. That's what I did. I was like, I'm going to learn how to video edit, and then I did. And then I learned that my computer sucks, and I had to learn how to, like, upgrade my laptop, so I did. I made a dress out of a hospital gown, a hospital gown, if you will. And it only took me a long time. Uh, and there were a lot of things that I had to do over again because I messed them up. There were a lot of things that I would never done before. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it looks like a dress. I feel like to people who maybe have never sewn anything before, I might be able to pull it off as just a quirky garment. It still definitely looks like a hospital gown. And I decided to keep the pocket on just to kind of own that. Just be like, yeah, it needs to be a hospital gown. Look at this pocket. Super hospital gown. So, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm, I really hope this was entertaining because uh, I stopped being entertained like four days ago.